Hi there, everybody. Welcome again to another Monday night and another Make It With Me Monday session. Hope you all had a great weekend. If you are a football fan in Wisconsin, you know we had both our Badgers and Packers win this weekend, so that was really fun. Sometimes that doesn't always happen when they play on the same weekend. Um, look forward to seeing who's going to be popping in tonight. I'm um, going to start out with just showing you guys what I'm going to be using for my particular sample set tonight. And it's a suite in the mini catalog. So this is your cover. If you want to reference Jan the July to December 20, 2021 mini catalog, page 31. This is the Sweet Little Stockings suite. And if you are an animal lover, there's some really cute ones in here. We've got dogs and cats and um, some really fun stocking images and other things to go with it. And I'm gonna be offering up my next Christmas card class based on this one, um, but showing you guys a different way to go with it. So hi, Mary Lynn, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, showing you guys a different way to use it if you're not necessarily, you know, the cat, dog, cutesy kind of person. There's lots of great things you can do with the stamp set and dies and accessories from this suite. Um, so let me start by showing you the designer series paper. This particular one I've used a lot, so <laughs> I only have like this little smidge left instead of, hi Kathy, thanks for showing up, um, this little piece left, but it's really neat because it has just a plain um, pool party check on the back, and then these, this one is my absolute favorite, the string of lights, so I'm totally in love with that one. And who can resist this cute little doggy and kitty peeking other package? And then there's a really neat just stitched cranberry aside. Um, these particular stockings all fit the dies or I should say there's a die to fit each one of these. Um, so if you didn't want to use it as a designer series paper, look at all the pieces you could cut out of here with your dies. And if you're not a die machine type person, this one's really not that hard to fussy cut either. Really basic straight images to cut. Um, and the black, it's almost like a um, bumblebee and black stars on the back, which I think actually gives me even like a Halloween feel. It's kind of cool. Um, here's some more cute animals. So we've got puppies and kitties and goldfish. And then this really neat stripe on the back that's all in the green tones. This one, my son Sam decided is one of our favorites because this cat looks completely annoyed by the fact that somebody put antlers on him, which is exactly what a cat would do. So um, <laughs> that one has, again, dogs and cats, but then look at this really cute stitching. Hi, Aunt Mary, thanks for popping in. Uh, looks like a little cute little stitched, um, you know, Christmas sweater type thing in the cherry cobbler. And then here's mini versions of the stockings with the animals peeking out. So I think that's just absolutely adorable. And then the back is this other really neat little pattern of just a whole bunch of different random um, literally patterns, I guess, swirlies and hashtags and all kinds of different things. So it's a really fun suite of paper. And then there's some colored dots that um, go along with that color scheme. It's, um, let's see, Bumblebee, Cherry Cobbler, Evening Evergreen, and Old Olive. And if you look, it might be, you, hopefully you can see, it's actually kind of ombre. So they get a little lighter as you go toward the lower portion of each of those color things. So that's kind of neat. And the ribbon is really pretty pool party and white stripes. And I plan to stock up on a little bit of this because it's in that mini catalog. It's not going to be around forever. But pool party is one of those that doesn't have a lot of coordinating colors or ribbons and such. And it's going to be good for any occasion because it's literally just a white stripe in the middle. So, um, and then here is the bundle. So this would be your stamp set and your die. All of the images in here have a matching die piece. And then there's some extra pieces um, like the stitching here and these funny little half moon shaped like things, that would be to do the cuffs and um, toppers of a stocking if you made it just out of paper. So lots of great ways to go ahead with this particular set, even if you aren't a doggy cat lover. Alrighty, so it looks like a couple of you have popped in now. We will get ready for our stamping time. Um, if you hopefully had a chance to peek at the Facebook page and get the specs, I know it was a little later with it than usual, um, but you're gonna want a card base. That is five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna be using cherry cobbler and make sure it's scored in, at four and a quarter so you can fold it in half. You want a piece of cardstock and that could be either the exact same or a different color. That depends on what you're using. Mine is actually gonna be the same color on this one. So I also have another cherry cobbler piece that's three by five and a quarter. Then you want a strip of your designer series paper, one inch by five and a half inches. And I'm using one of those pieces from the Sweet Stockings designer series paper. And then you want a piece of neutral cardstock, so white or vanilla, that's one and three quarter by two and three quarter, and then stamps and um, phrases and whatever you need to fill up that space. Or if you had a, foc a finished focal point, like you have a die cut piece, um, something like that, you want it to be about, cover that same, about that same um, surface area. So hopefully that made sense when it was posted. 
Alrighty, so let's get started with your focal point if you don't already have it set to go. Um, I'm gonna be using the kitty face and a little one that says, uh, says uh, peace, joy, and kisses. And I'm gonna do that in cherry cobbler first over on this edge of my guy right there. Then I'm gonna be using my blend. So I'm gonna be using my memento black ink pad because you want to use that when you use your blends. And pardon my head if it gets in the way, I'm trying to make sure I get him kind of centered or whatever I want him to be. All right, perfect. There is that little guy. Um, and then if you're not familiar with our blends, they're an alcohol-based marker and they're very, um, they, they, they do what they say by their name. They blend very, very well. Um, so you can have very pretty and various um, uh, shades of color put in there and then have it look really, really blended together. Unlike some normal markers where you might see the um, the edges as you're drawing, you see like each little mark as it goes, this is gonna get blended in really nicely. So I'm using both my dark and light crumb cake and then my light Calypso Coral. I just put a little pink in, um, I guess his or her ear, I guess, we have one of each, so I don't really know if this is a he or a she, because um, we have one of each kitty. <laughs> Um, and our kitties decided to go on an adventure last week. Um, we had a, a situation where our door was accidentally blown open and nobody noticed. And both of our little Dickenses decided they wanted to go exploring outside. And our, our little girl was missing for um, about an hour before she finally decided to come back. Um, so that was a little, not quite the way I planned to spend my Thursday late afternoon, but we got nice walks around the neighborhood while we were looking for them. Uh, but they were back safe and sound, no worries, and our uh, youngest, who is the cat lover for sure, was very pleased to have them back. <laughs> okay, so as you saw, I drew with my, um, there's a brush tip end, so kind of like a paint brush. I'll put it up here where you can see a little better. So kind of a paintbrush end. And then there's another end you could use to write, or it also is really good for a blend. So it's gonna be more of a marker tip, okay? And then I, I started with my dark and went to my light. That's kind of a cook's choice um, on that one. When you're coloring with blends, you can start out with either direction and then go from there. All right, so if you've got your focal point ready to go, you're gonna wanna grab your um, cardstock and we're gonna go ahead and fold that in half. And I left my bone folder on the other edge of the table, so I'm just gonna use my finger now. <laughs> okay, you're gonna wanna take your piece of designer series paper and you have two choices. You can put it directly up to the edge so there's no card color showing, or move it over just the tiniest little bit and you'll have a little bit of a border showing there. And I've, as I go through my samples, you'll see that I've done a little bit of each um, on my extra sample so you guys can see the differences between what that might look like. All right, so I'm gonna put, leave a little bit of border on this one. And if you end up with a little bit of leftover at the top, just you know trim off what you don't need. All right, and then this piece you can decide if you wanna leave it flat or if you wanna raise it up on dimensionals. I'm just gonna put mine down flat for tonight. Um, you could also think about, especially if it's the same color as your base, you could think about adding um, some background stamp image to it or um, putting it through an embossing folder, something to give it just a little bit of depth and texture. I just went for the simple basic tone on tone for tonight. All right, I am though gonna show you how I can um, kind of blend in a little bit on the edges of this to make it a little so quite white on the outside. So I'm gonna take my cherry cobbler ink pad again and I'm gonna take my blending brush and this is one's brand new so there's no color on it yet. Um, and you're gonna work this just like you might a stamp. So tap it into your ink pad and then start off your paper and just start doing little circles. And you can see you're gonna be bringing that color in off the edges. Okay, so again, tapping, start off the paper and I'm just, like I said, I'm just breaking up some of the starkness of that white, because sometimes it's a little bit in your face, so to speak. <laughs> okay, so that gave just a little bit of hint to that. Um, this time I am gonna pop that up with some dimensionals, so give that a little bit of a raise. Again, you could put this down directly if you want. That is, of course, always your choice, um, especially remember, keep in mind if it's something you're mailing, uh, you don't necessarily always want um, bulk in your mail so that you don't end up having to pay like extra postage or something like that. All right, and this is going to, whoops, let me get those shrapnels out of the way here. And I'm also gonna move my ink pad because I know I will end up sticking my fingers in it. <laughs> okay, there we go. So this is gonna end up a little bit down here, like so. 
all right you could have it right in the middle towards the uh, bottom whatever you think and then if you brought any extra accessories with you tonight like ribbons or bling or anything like that you can add that around um, so for example if I had um, I've got some linen thread here that's already just like tied in a bow we could add that to the top there we could add a little bit of it off to the side it's still attached to my big thread which is why it's not cut um, or if you had a larger piece um, I know it's not right color wise but I do have this wider ribbon here you could do a knot or a bow um, knots are easier obviously for most people <laughs> and again you could have a little knot of ribbon up there um, you could also give the kitty a really cute little bow tie or something like that if you went that way um, I am just gonna add a little bit of sparkle with my Winko Stella pen so if you don't already have one of these or know what it is it's kind of like um, being able to paint with glitter so it has a clear liquid inside with nothing but clear sparkly, um, sparkly, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit to each of these stockings that's on my designer series paper. And you just uh, brush it on. It's literally, like I said, just like a paintbrush, it's already got the liquid inside of it. Um, so all you're doing is spreading that really pretty bling on there. And hopefully this will show up enough on camera. If not, you should be able to see it when I post the pictures later. But in each of those spots, where I just did that. Hopefully you can catch that here. A little bit of that glimmer will show up. Um, but again, you'll see that showing up pretty well in those pictures later when I post them on the Facebook page. All right, so that is my on care. Of course, Mary, I always think of you with bows, but trust me, you're not the only one. I get this a lot that um, I eventually just started making up all the bows when you came to class actually in my studio because inevitably, most of the people would ask for help with tying a bow. So, <laughs> and I don't know if Tina's here tonight, but um, Tina once upon a time ordered a spool of ribbon and paid me a little bit extra to actually cut about half of it into little tiny bow and tie little tiny bows with it for her uh, because it's something that just didn't work with <laughs> what she had going on. So yes, I actually do think of all of you practically when I think of making bows. <laughs> um, I don't know how, why it's just a good thing going on for me, but it just is. Um, all right, so let me show you a couple other ideas I used with this stamp set. Um, and again, these next couple are going to be ones that you might not think of when you see this because it doesn't actually have a whole lot to do with the kitties and doggies. Um, so here's what I used just the, um, like again before, I showed you the page with the stockings all over it. Here we go. And all I did was cut one out. You can see it's right there. Just ran it through my die cut machine and cut it out. And then I added um, some of the shimmery crystal effects across the stitching a little bit. Again, I don't know if it's gonna show up here, but hopefully you'll be able to see it in the photo. It just adds a little bit of texture and sparkle across where that stitching is supposed to be. This little stitching stamp is just um, that many little stitches and I just kind of used it as a background to fill in the blank space of my olive green um, card base or card background card stock, there we go. <laughs> and this particular one here you can see comes as one big long stamp and all I did was cover up part of it and stamp the first part, clean it, cover up the other part, get that part inky and stamp the other part. So I broke it up so that it fit better onto my little square for my, my uh, focal point. Okay, so there's another idea. This one you might look at and go, huh, that's not even in there, is it? Um, yes, actually it is. So you see this little tiny pine bow. I used that all the way around to make a wreath. Um, and I'm gonna film a little video later that'll show you how to do that. It's actually a lot easier than you think um, to make that um, any shape like that. You could do this with little flowers. You could do this with any sort of branch type looking thing. It's really easy actually to do once you get the basics of it. Um, also on this one, um, on the early evergreen layer, layer here and the olive larger layer in the background, I ran it through the wintry 3D embossing folders. Now this is a set of two um, that come, actually I'm gonna show you the the packaging because it's a little bit easier. So you get two different folders. One has snowflakes and one has the pine boughs. And they're the narrow three inch width. So here's the, the snowflake one. And here's our pine bow one. Okay, so I ran each of these through with the pine bow because I wanted to match the pine bow of my stamped image. Um, so I thought that was kind of fun. And I added um, gold cording behind there and then also a little bow at the top of my wreath. So there you go, that's another one. And here is, um, now I like to show you different options again for the layout. So this is the same layout, just flipped horizontally. So 
There's my one inch piece, there's my three by five and a half piece, and here's my focal point. And again, I just rotated it horizontally, okay? Um, I cut out, I, I fussy cut, these, were, these are pretty easy to fussy cut. I fussy cut the cute little doggy all tied up in um, Christmas lights, and this cute little mousy. Um, and the for you, again, I stamped and broke apart, so I stamped it and then just cut it into two pieces so it could fit just into where I needed it. I'll bring it up a little bit. Um, but I like how he matches that background designer series paper because he's the Christmas lights are all over it. And I really kind of wish they gave us an entire pack of this because I would be going through it like crazy. <laughs> all right, I'm going to bring back the original one I stamped tonight, and then I'm going to show you how I stepped it up. All righty. Oh, and I did want to point out on these two, this is one, the ones where I took it directly to the edge. Um, remember I said you could leave a little space. Um, this one too, I left a little space at the edge. Um, there we go. This one too, I have a little bit of space, but those other ones had the uh, designer series paper right up against the edge and both look as just as awesome. Um, so same piece of designer series paper here. Um, same image, but this time I ran it through the die cut and I uh, ran it through with the die cut machine. Cut out the cat head, I cut out a Santa hat for him and painted that up. Um, we've got a different phrase this time, Santa Paws is coming to town. Um, so instead of just a larger piece here, I have a little narrower um, phrase, but then I added him as a little bit more of a focal point. I also used the um, knit sweater, knit together. Um, there's a, 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 a stamp and die set. Uh, it's on page 34 of the um, mini catalog. And if you can see, I use, so the, the knit sweater stamp is literally one large background stamp that just looks literally like knit sweater material. And then the dies will cut out all kinds of really cute little stitched sweater patterns. Um, this one actually separates. Um, so like that little piece right here is separate from everything else. This one just cut it out of the solid piece. And then you just kind of like match it back up again when you're gonna put it together. And I wanted a little, a little color behind it, but not too bright. So this is actually um, soft sea foam back there. So it stayed in the green sec green area of the uh, color palette. And then we did that. So I'm also going to take Wink of Stella and add it to his Santa hat because I think Santa needs a little bit of glimmer on his fun stuff. All right. So now he has a sparkly hat and a little sparkly pom-pom. Alrighty. So I think I went through and told you where everything was. I'll have, I'll have everything posted. Um, on the Facebook page and again in the YouTube video with um, all of the uh, things I used and the layout and the, the cutting directions and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that you guys can go back and review in case you are either watching this later or didn't have, um, didn't have time to actually prep anything but just wanted to watch along tonight, which is absolutely totally fine. All right, so again, let me go, I gotta flip him because he's a horizontal card. <laughs> all right, so here are the ones for tonight. I hope you guys had lots of fun with this layout. Again, it's a nice, easy one. Um, I'll show you, I'll be posting the actual sample, or um, the, the place I found the, uh, the layout from, but I actually changed some of the dimensions of it just to make it for easier for cutting. They were using mention of uh, seven eighths widths and whatever, and I just changed it to quarters and halves and ones because it's just easier to cut, and it, it's a little bit of paper saving on some levels too. So. Um, so that'll be up there, but probably don't pay attention to those cutting directions. Follow the ones I gave you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mary, Kathy, everyone else who is here uh, for joining me tonight. And I hope to see you guys again next Monday. Thank you so much. Have a great day.